In this video, I'm going to show you a system for drawing multi-views that's based on something called descriptive geometry. Descriptive geometry was invented by a French mathematician. His name was Gaspard Monge. Here's his last name, M-O-N-G-E. And um, he thought all this stuff up probably in the late 1700s. So this has been around for a while. So let's imagine that you are trying to visualize the multi-views of this triangle right here. And so it's essentially, it's a plane. It has a slight thickness to it. So what I would do is look at, the, look at all the possible views of it and then say, okay, <clears throat> my principal view and that would be the one that would show me the most, I would probably draw that right there for my principal view. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make a quick sketch uh, kind of what that principal view looks like. Something like that right there, right? And uh, maybe I should have got this a little straighter across right there. And I can see that I have these three points that define that plane. I can label this point A, and this one B, and this one C over here, okay? Now, just for realism, I'll add in this little thing that's right here, that little cutout that's in there. Okay, so the way it works whenever you're trying to figure out what something looks like is that you want to rotate your object 90 degrees relative to the uh, initial view that you have. And so here's how that works. If this is my front view, I want to go up here to this view at the top because what I want to create is a top view and I want to take that point and I want to rotate that toward me 90 degrees and I want to keep it directly above this view right here but you can see that what we end up with essentially is just a straight line that has a little bit of thickness to it so it's actually going to be two lines on the edges so if I do that same thing right here with B or with point B because it's the highest point, I would rotate this toward me and spin it 90 degrees. And so first thing I would do before I did that is I would lightly draw a construction line up from point A and I would lightly draw a construction line straight up from B and lightly draw a construction line straight up from C like that. Then what I would do is I would add a line, just a horizontal line between where my front view is going to be, my top view is going to be above that line right there. I would come out just a little ways past the edge of this line that I've constructed here, and I would just draw a vertical line. And then what I would do is go to point B, and I would project it straight across over to here. And you can see A and C are on the same line, so I'm going to draw those that way like that okay so my right side view is going to wind up over here and my top view is going to wind up up here now what these lines here represent are what we call a fold line and uh, just trust me on this for right now so what we're going to have in this area right in here what we call this is our front view but we actually call this a frontal view like that. The top view that we're going to have in here, we're going to call actually a horizontal view. And the right side view, which is going to be over here, we're going to refer to it as a profile view. And um, Monge is the guy who thought this up. Uh, he would label this as like F, H, and P except he was probably speaking French and those words may not be the same in French. So we go back to looking at our object. We know when we rotate this top point 90 degrees toward us, we wind up with a straight line. That line has to fall between A and C up here. So I'm just going to draw a line straight across and give it a little bit of thickness and draw that across. Close up the ends on it like that. And right here where B goes up, there would be a little dark line coming across like that. And so if you wanted to, you could label that this edge right here is B and this edge over here corresponds to A. And right over here, this corresponds to C. 
All right, now here's a cool thing. You know this, this fold line that we just added in here? If we were to go to the corner of that fold line right there and sketch in a 45 degree line. Now it's important we sketch it in at 45 degrees. If we do any like 30 degrees or 15, it's, it's not going to work very well. It's going to skew how we use this. But here's how we can use this line right here. First off, we call this a miter line. And what the miter line allows us to do is to project from our top view to our side view or from our side view up and over to our top view. So here's what I would do. I would go to this front leading edge of that view and I would just lightly project over until it crosses the miter line. And then I would go to the line above and I would lightly project it across over here till it crosses the line. Then I would go to the points where it intersects and I would project straight down like this and I would project straight down like this. And so my right side view actually is going to land between those two lines that come down. So I'm going to darken these edges right here. And B actually projects across to right there. So this edge right here would be where B comes across. And this line down here actually represents A and C in my right side view. So this is the descriptive geometry method of determining what a front, a top, and a right side view would look like. All right. Now, in the next um, example, I'm going to remove this guy, and I'm going to tape down another sheet of sketching paper here. And I'm going to show you another object, a little bit more complicated than that triangle. All right, so here's my object. I have a piece of aluminum that has a hole drilled through it. And this piece of aluminum is about four inches by four inches. And the diameter of this hole is, a, is about two inches. So if I look at the potential views I could have of this thing, it's pretty clear that this is the view that shows me the most about this object. So this is the view I would choose to be my front view, front view or my principal view. And then I would rotate that 90 degrees to get a top view. And the way you do that, again, is you go up to your top edge right up here and you rotate that toward you and you come around 90 degrees and this will be your top view. Now, if you want to go back to your front view, you would rotate it the opposite of that to bring it back to the front view. So here we're back at the front view front view. If I want to get the right side view, I would go to the right side view and I would rotate the object 90 degrees like that. Okay, so when we bring it back to this view right here, we're back to our principal view. Now one thing we, uh, that I wanted to mention about rotating 90 degrees is when we rotate this 90 degrees, what we wind up with is what's called an orthogonal view of this thing because the view that we're seeing from our right side when we look straight in here is at a 90 degree angle to this plane right here. And whenever your line of sight comes straight in like that and is perpendicular to the plane, we say that you're orthogonal to that plane. Now we could also, another term that could be used for that is called being normal to the plane, all right? So I'm gonna come back to this view right here because this is my principal view. This is what I'm gonna sketch first and then I'm gonna figure out how to get my other views from there. So I'm gonna start by making a sketch of the front view. So I'm gonna use the descriptive geometry method again. So I'm gonna draw a four inch by four inch square. Now I'm not drawing it full scale. I'm, obviously I've scaled this down. This is smaller. Then I'm going to add my hole that goes through that part. I'm just going to sketch a hole in there like that. It's not perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to add a center mark, which is a little plus right there in the center of that. And then I'm going to have a gap and I'm going to bring a line out past the edge. We want to bring these lines out past the edge about a quarter of an inch. So that's 0.25 inches. And if you're familiar with the metric system, we would extend this out about six millimeters. 
I'll have another gap over here, and then I'm going to extend this line out, a gap here, extend this line down, a gap here, and extend this line up. And so this is my center mark right here, and altogether we could refer to that as the center lines for that hole. All right. Now, if you remember what we did before, we drew a fold line just horizontally across like that. And what we're going to do is have our top view above that fold line. We can come over somewhere and just draw a, uh, a vertical line like that. This is also a fold line, and so that means our right side view is going to be over here on this side of the fold line. And starting at this corner right here, we can add a 45 degree miter line. All right. The next step that I would do, well, first off, let me just say that this is going to be our front view. This is going to be where our side view will be, and our top view will be up here. And again, this is referred to as the frontal view, the frontal projection plane over here. This is the profile projection plane would be over here, and this is called the horizontal projection plane. All right, so here's what I would do next. I would go to this side right over here, and that we consider that a feature of the front view, and I would draw a light construction line straight up from there. I would go to the right side of the front view, and I, that's also a feature. I would lightly construct a line going straight up. I'm, I would go to this top edge. I would lightly draw a construction line into this quadrant over here, go to this bottom edge, and project that across like that. Okay, now I already know from you know, using my imagination that if, if I start up here and I rotate this toward me, that what I see is pretty much a rectangular top view. And so what I would do is just choose a point and draw a straight line across like that. And then I would go up the thickness of that object. And then I would come across like this. And I would connect that. And so there's where my top view fits in. Now. If we use the miter line to help us create the right side view, here's what we would do. We would go to this front edge of the top view, project a light line across until it crosses the miter line, project a light line across until it crosses the miter line there, go to that point where it crosses and draw a construction line straight down like this, go where it crosses over here and draw a construction line straight down like that. All right. Our right side view is going to fit right between those construction lines, just like that right there. All right, so I have my top view, I have my right side view, and I have my front view. Now my views are not finished yet because I need to deal with this hole because the hole in the right side view and the hole in the top view is going to be represented by some hidden lines and some center lines. So let me show you how you put that hole in. Go to the front view and go to the very top of the hole, which we call the quadrant right there, and draw a light construction line over into your right side view. And then go to the bottom quadrant and also draw a light construction line across. Go to your center line and draw a light construction line across like that. Do the same thing in your top view. Go to your quadrant, draw a light construction line straight up, Go to your center line, draw a light construction line straight up. Go to your right quadrant here on your circle and draw a light construction line straight up. All right. Now, the top of the hole comes from this point right here. So as we come across, when we get to the front edge of our view here, we're going to start drawing a dashed line, which represents the top edge of that hole. And that dashed line we're drawing right there is called a hidden line. So the top of the hole will be represented with a hidden line. If we go to the bottom of the hole and project it across, we will have a hidden line here as well. And because a hole is a cylinder in shape, what we want to define for that is the center axis of that cylinder. The center axis of that cylinder lies on this line right here. So to draw that center line, here's what we'll do. We'll come out about a quarter of an inch, 
we'll draw a line across and stop. We'll put a little gap and then a short line, another little gap, and then we'll come out about 0.25. This line right here is the center line. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing up here. We'll go to our quadrant, project up. We're gonna darken the left edge of the hole. We'll find out where the right edge of the hole is and put some hidden lines in for that. So of course this is this is hidden. This line over here is also hidden. And then we want to come in and come out about a quarter inch, put a stop, put a little gap, draw a short little dash, and bring this down like that. There's the center line going through for our hole. So what we have now is our front, our top, and our right side view of the hole. Uh, this technique we're using where we're projecting these points across, that technique is called orthographic projection. And a minute ago I said that this view here, because we're looking in at this plane on the side right here and that we are uh, at a 90 degree angle to that, where our line of sight is perpendicular to that, I said that was orthogonal. Well, you can see ortho, so the root word of orthogonal and orthographic, they share the same root. Okay, so it means that you're perpendicular to the plane, your line of sight is perpendicular to the plane. All right, so we're using orthographic projection. Uh, most of this stuff was at least written down for the first time by a guy named Gaspard Monge. He was a French mathematician. Uh, he wrote a book called uh, Descriptive Geometry, except because it was French, it was called Geometry Descriptive. All right, so uh, this is how you do multi-view drawings where you apply orthographic projection and descriptive geometry. And so, you know, you can simplify it from here, but this is really the, the core of how people first started drawing multi-views and how they were visualizing those multi-views. And I think that's a good idea for us to kind of think the same way. Now, remember I said this, this line here is called a fold line and this line here is called a fold line. That's because I want you to imagine that we have a glass box like this and that this line here, that these lines here are hinged. And then we take this object right here and we put it inside of that glass box. So there's the hole coming through. Then we project our front view out onto this plane right here. Well, this is our frontal plane. And that's what we're seeing right here. We project these points out onto the side view over here. This is called our profile plane. And it will have our hidden lines going through and our center line. And then we project up to this projection plane here and our top view is going to land right in here someplace. And it will have hidden lines and a center line going through it. So I need to add my center lines over here. And so when I call this a fold line, I want you to imagine that you've taken this glass box and you've taken the front view and then you folded this view up so that it's above and then you folded this view in this direction so that it's over here on the side. And uh, that's why we call those fold lines. That's why we call this a frontal plane, a profile plane, and this a horizontal plane because you can see it runs horizontally. All right, that's a pretty good introduction to descriptive geometry. You can thank this guy right here. If you ever get a job doing this for a living, thank Gaspard Monge. <laughs>